Sias Turks, Sias Turks, Sias Turks. Welcome to the Science Jerks. I'm your host, Dave Chacho. With me, as usual, uh, your other host, Robert Chan. Hi. And we're back for the second episode with our very special guest, Jeremy Bellinger. Welcome back. Thank you, guys. It's been three days, and I'm, Mm -hmm. you know, wearing different clothes, as usual. Feeling all rested up. Mm -hmm. Rested up. I got some different running jokes that we're going to be doing throughout this. (laughs) Oh, Because we've completely forgotten about about the ones. Put together some material for this week's this episode. The racism is out of this episode, right guys? (laughs) Racism is out. Rape is in. (laughs) Nope, nope. Hope that's not there either. (laughs) Rape and racism are out. (laughs) Yes. Moral compass is in. (laughs) Yeah. Can we talk about the scriptures for a little bit? Sure. Sure. Let's talk about Mark 3.16. Oh, yeah. Not John 3.16. Mark 3.16. Mark 3.16. Oh, (laughs) no. Really? We said that last time, didn't we? Well, you say we like... (laughs) Jeremy. God, no. Seriously, I played played guitar in the praise band at church like guys oh, this no. is bad like i should know this <laughs> oh, no. i went to church for a very long time and then you smoked pot for just as long yes is jeremy a biblical name uh jeremy is not a biblical name okay so there isn't anything that jeremy jeremiah Jere- there, jeremiah yeah. is jeremy. i don't know if is that is name jeremiah i don't know uh, yeah. i really should have studied you don't know out what your full name is jeremiah jeremiah is straight up a biblical name it's yeah, in the Bible. Probably. There's a lot of Amish guys named Jeremiah, so that makes sense. Yeah. Oh. I should really have studied what I was worshiping <laughs> for the point. first 20 years helpful. of my life. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Jeremy. Yeah. The parts of the podcast where you only see one pair of footprints, that's when we're <laughs> carrying you. <laughs> Then, oh, wait, wait, be, wait, wait, wait a minute. So I'm carrying you. Who's carrying Jeremy? <laughs> just, otherwise, you're you're carrying, carrying both of us, <laughs> frankly, most of the time. <laughs> or like I'm walking and you're walking in the exact same footsteps just to cover our tracks. <laughs> like a like a Three Stooges like a video, I think. <laughs> or it's like just to throw the, off anyone who's yeah, chasing us. By, like, That's, bounty hunters you guys whatever, are really. sneaky, just mm-hmm. like God. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are listening to this Trying to find our tracks on a beach somewhere? You're <laughs> not Jesus. going to, because we're throwing you off. <laughs> what happened when there were those footprints, and then they went to the water, and then they just disappeared? Well, I, well that, my son, is when I went upstream so that the hounds couldn't catch my scent. <laughs> <laughs> God is really good at prison breaks, apparently. <laughs> There's this messiah with one arm. He's the one that killed my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some science. Lepidopterotology. <laughs> You all seen that Pacific Rim trailer, right? No. The Guillermo del Toro movie. Yeah. Robot it looks movie. Like the, yeah. Oh, you have to watch it oh. because it's the most amazing. It they're just giant fucking robots yeah. and giant fucking monsters. Here's the thing. Uh here's here's the point. Uh giant robots are amazing and now we're giving them moths. What? Moths. Moths, moths the things that eat your clothes and yeah. we're giving them robots. We are putting them into giant robots and letting them pilot them the fuck around because <laughs> what we need are giant robots to keep running into light, light bulbs. bulbs. What it looked like in the video, it's basically it's a moth driving a little car around. That's what it is. What, what okay, what they did is because moths have a really well developed sense of smell and they have ingrained tracking behaviors and okay. they thought well, like uh, four, four little dumb insects anyway. Right, right, right. Yeah. But they're but we have robots that can't do things. Uh, and they thought like, well, kind of like um, like a like, cybernetic dolphin. You know how they're they're planning on, and I'm sure they actually have like <laughs> cybernetic things. dolphins implanting things in oh, dolphins okay. so that they would. They could like uh, search out mines and that sort of thing. Okay, well, the, because the, they have technology, they they can do things that mm-hmm. we our robots can't do yet. They were like, "How do we make a robot that can smell?" And in instead of making a robot that can smell, they thought, "Oh, we'll take a moth that can smell and make it and drive into a the robot. robot, jam it into a this, fucking robot." This is how the apocalypse happens, guys. It's how it begins. Yeah, and I'm okay with this part of it. Moth driven robot, fucking war. cyborg moths. Oh man, um, yeah. So that's that. The idea is that uh, you can get them to you know track things 
that uh, a normal robot couldn't track. What they did is they put the moth on what's basically like a yeah like a big styrofoam ball yeah. instead of like a steering wheel. It's like, wheel. A, uh, like a, a mouse ball almost. Uh, you know the, those... But they're on top of it rather than inside it. Those yeah. trackball yeah, mouses. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, oh, you... that kind of mouse. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, but basically what they have is like a little car and they put the moth, tie it down with a little lasso, I guess, whatever. <laughs> put them on top of the ball and then they put them into like a, a cell and like uh, here's some female moth pheromones and they would drive the little thing towards it Uh, and they even uh, to, to make sure that it wasn't like a fluke, they actually jimmied the the robot thing so that like it they, would they steer the to the left, off a and they bit. figured and out how kept... to steer it so that they could get it to the thing. Wow! So you know, yeah, I mean that's amazing that we're giving little insects these powers, and eventually we're going to start giving them to larger and smarter creatures until eventually, yes, we are all in giant Gundams or Veritex, which would be that's all I'm living for at this point. Yeah. Here's, here's what pisses me off about this, okay? My <laughs> iPhone can't get fucking reception, right? But we give a fucking robot to a moth? Come on, man. To be fair, where's we my didn't giant give, robot? Where's my giant robot? We didn't robot? give the moth Wi-Fi. Because <laughs> that would, yeah, I would be pissed about that. Yeah. And I would be calling up Time Warner. Like, I'm hey, already- man, this moth got free Wi-Fi, all right? And my introductory <laughs> offer ended last month. I need that extended. To be fair, you don't have electrodes implanted in your head. I didn't see any on the moth, I'll but I assume that they... For free Wi-Fi, man? I'll put, you put <laughs> shit in my head all day. I want oh, free Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, you will be able to uh, just stream it directly into your head. Yeah. Electrodes. Yeah. That's, that's the future that we all live for. You, you can get this podcast directly into your head. <laughs> If you're a moth. If yeah, you're I mean, a moth. You, you'll also have to spend your days uh, driving a car towards female moth pheromones. <laughs> dude. Which can get a little dull. Nah, dude. Have you seen how sexy okay. some of these moths get? If that's your only job in life. Just driving to... Just the, oh, kick dude. back and hey, man. driving your <laughs> <You're basically> giant <laughs> robot, <laughs> look, picking up chicks. Just cruising for some moth pussy, hey, bro. what's happening, chica? <laughs> dude, I got some giant moth balls. They need to get... Oh, wow. Well, we went there. We went to the moth oh, balls. Boy. Hello, my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Michigan for a Michigan Yeah, for it was a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, right. Hello, my honey. He should pop up in the podcast anytime when it's a really bad pun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Driving a little frog car. <laughs> we all thought it was just a pipe dream, but we have found an animal that can eat with its ass. Chacho here with Chan and our guest Jeremy Bellinger. You mean pipe like stick it up your tailpipe dream? No, that wasn't meant to be. But that would have been some sort of extremely complicated too. pun. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only kind of deal, and I'll have you know. <laughs> there is a, what is it called? The giant California sea cucumber. And that doesn't even count as an animal. Those friggin' sea cucumbers are the most disgusting, weird... They're basically sea slugs. They look kind of like nature's version of a fleshlight. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes. Way to keep it clean, Jerry. I w- <laughs> no, it's cool. You no, it's said cool. We're still, you were going to steer I was clear trying to bring joke. God into the situation. Have you guys accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Mm-mm. No? Okay, no. good. Anyways, back to the thing <laughs> that you stick your dick in. <laughs> back to Joe Rogan fucking sea cucumbers. <laughs> They're big sea slugs. And by the way, this is your fault because oh, no. you requested a story on food science. <laughs> and and, and is, then I get butt this stuff. This is the closest yeah. I could it come up like, with. It sounds like my sex life. You know, I request something and I get butt stuff. <laughs> it, it <always> gets, uh, <laughs> some, hey, I just thought maybe a little foreplay. Some anal know, play. Nope. Stick finger it in, in the there, butt. Get butt. <laughs> well, that's what we're about to do. So bend over, Jeremy. All right. Ooh. Bring it. The giant California sea cucumber, when it is threatened by a predator, it came up with the extremely clever solution of expelling its entire digestive system out its mouth and running away. It would be like if someone threatened you with a knife, you threw up your stomach and left your intestines on the sidewalk. And You you laugh now, but some guy walked up to me last week with a knife. I just puked 
And he was like, and then I ran Give away. Give me your stomach. <laughs> 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 have that's, anything you by want. By the way, that it would be have the as best many way. organs as you need. That's the best way to stop a fight. You know, like, oh yeah, hey motherfucker, come here. You want to start a fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. no uh, that's, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you Did doing? Did you just puke on me, bro? Spell your I'm stomach. Here. I don't think that's disgusting. the way it works. No? Like you ruined my clothes. This is like a four hundred dollar leather jacket. If you, if uh, let me ask you this fucking... question: If we were about to fight, mm-hmm. and then I just straight up puked, not on you, just straight up puked in front of you, mm-hmm. you would not fight me. Uh, I feel like if I wanted to fight you, you would feel so bad, right? No, well, no. People who get into fights don't feel <laughs> at all. I'm they humanizing huge assholes. <laughs> that big jock. How fucking... belligerent are you in this scenario? <laughs> Very. Are you puking like? Pathe- I'm puking are you, up straight. Uh, are you pathetic wild puking <laughs> no, or are you yeah, angry, no, yeah. I'm aggressive angry puking? vomiting? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, yeah, because if you're if you're like crying the whole time, then yeah, they might back off. Like, also, really? it's not an involuntary one. It's the one where like you stick your finger in your throat and you have to gag a couple times beforehand, like. Yeah, motherfucker. Oh, what are you going to do? Oh, what are you going to oh, do? No, oh, 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 what are you going to do? So wait, oh. so this cucumber, it, it pukes up its guts, mm-hmm. literally. Right. And in order to, so researchers are like, well, then what the hell does it do? I, you know what? I've heard that about sea cucumbers and I never really thought about it. That like afterwards, so, what the fuck? You've got, you don't have any guts is, left. The solution is, I assume, although it doesn't say in this article, I assume that they regrow their guts or else um it wouldn't make sense to expel yeah. them willy-nilly like this so what happens <laughs> okay so it, it spits, it, its, guts spits out. its guts out no guts and left. now it doesn't have a stomach or intestines wandering gutless through the ocean mm-hmm. so the solution they can eat with their ass Brr. they uh they eat algae and they they scream uh um, they just suck it up the buttholes <laughs> the other related issue is they breathe through their buttholes, buttholes. okay Okay, well, I've so seen that in a, college. I've definitely seen someone <laughs> breathe through their butthole so and fart it that out. that they're eating through the bits that they... They can eat. also smoke cigarettes through their buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember. The, I love those YouTube videos. And they could take yeah. a cream pie like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I spit ping pong balls out there. Guys, anybody getting horny? <laughs> Usually you have to go to Thailand for these kind of things. <laughs> Not in the Science Jerks lab. It's always Thailand in the Science Jerks lab. <laughs> oh, this is a lab. I should have uh, I should have wore my my I'm I've just did, contaminated this whole thing. Can you way. tell by our lab coats and Guy, goggles that we're you know always what? Sorry wearing? guys, I uh, I brought a snack here. Do you mind if I that, well, uh, no, what? no, it's okay. No, it's cool. Put, that's cool. Please don't, I'm part sea don't cucumber, put that in your butt. So <laughs> do gonna... not put those Cheetos in your butthole. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. That's not necessary. You're just sitting on chips. It's that's <laughs> not the same as eating with your butt. <laughs> By the way, I sat on ship last night. He's a man. <laughs> that was just me pretending to be gay. There. There's something there. There's something there, guys. I'm gonna be working. Sh- I'm gonna workshop this over at uh, that Chinese place on Vermont. The palace. <laughs> the palace. <I'm> gonna... <laughs> He'll be at Zany's next week, working on a whole set of chip jokes. <laughs> so yeah, the great mystery was how does the the sea cucumber eat? Mystery mm. solved. It's like if a bee had the option of not leaving its stinger uh, and then did it anyway. Yeah. I can walk away from this fight. I can, be, I can kick I your could ass be and the walk bigger away. Bee. But you know what? Or, or I'm just, it's, it's more like if a bee walked up to you, broke off its stinger, handed it to you, and then ran away. <laughs> <laughs> Just what thereby the committing that? suicide. <laughs> that was the most cowardly bee in the West. <laughs> Sorry to get back on my microbe soapbox again, but uh, it's so tiny. It is very, it's such a very cute tiny. little soapbox. <laughs> it's just little paramecium just waving their flagella around. <laughs> They're not listening to me. Repent, yeah. repent. <laughs> <laughs> but we've found a bug. That basically creates gold nanoparticles, sort of. Here's the thing. Delftia acidivorans. Oh, yeah, is, these uh, guys. Oh, dude, these guys are such douchebags. <laughs> they live on top of gold deposits, but the ions are toxic. A gold ion will kill it. So what they do is they excrete a protein that turns the gold ions into gold nanoparticles. 
basically just breaks them down and takes the charge away from them. So they can then live with yeah. them and on them, which they is... like make their own currency? They make little micro gold coins, yeah, stamp yeah. them with their own little uh, United States of Bear, America. 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 <laughs> I'm trying to think of... All I remember is paramecium. Oh, amoeba. United States of amoeba. There United we States go. Hello, my baby. Hello, my Hello, my honey. Hello, Hello my hot time, time guy. Well, cut that part out so it sounds like I'm a genius. <laughs> nope. They're alchemists, literally, right? Yeah. They're, they're oh, making, wow, yeah, they're right? spinning gold out of nothing. Well, I mean, they're, they're pulling gold, gold out of the water. Yeah, and they're turning them into gold nanoparticles, which are actually things that we use. We're starting to use nanoparticles for medical technologies, and we usually use gold nanoparticles because they are so uh, versatile. So it's possible that we can use something like this for gold extraction or even for finding rivers that have a lot of gold in them but are not in a state that... You know, oh, like, you do like a, a sensor that could sense how much gold is in the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The water. Or you could also use it for the ever important use of grills. Put yes. it on your teeth. Put and just things like, on your oh, teeth. Yeah. Just line like your teeth with self-forming nano particles. Forming grills that are just like <laughs> form on your teeth. Yeah, man, that's the sleep. future, baby. That's the future. Why would you need to buy gold when you can have? With bacteria making it in your mouth. You have a bunch of bacteria in your mouth and hope that they do the right thing. <laughs> we already got enough bacteria in also, our mouth. Also, right? when we send our scientists on a miniature inner space sort of adventure, <laughs> they're going to have so much bling. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Fantastic They're going to look like Mr. T, you know? <laughs> <laughs> when they find these bugs, they find them uh, around patches of gold because the gold then accumulates around them. So if we can figure they got out... so much gold, is probably worthless in their society. <laughs> they have like, like the gold. opposite society of us, Who needs guys? gold? Yeah. yeah. It's like the opposite of Midas. Or it's the same as Midas. Zorro world. <laughs> <laughs> Me am Delftia Acid Vorans no like gold. They would have what like... What is very actually valuable here is the written word. Yeah. <laughs> Go take this gold into the gold dump. <laughs> Take out the gold. It's every Thursday. No, the gold the truck comes trash. and picks our gold up. Me am use bad puns for currency. <laughs> it am best thing in world. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for a quiz. It's time for it's, it's time, time for, for a quiz. quiz. We are back with Quiz Master Liz. How are you, Liz? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. Even Last better. episode, we owned you. Normally, yeah. normally it's just me that owns you and everybody else at the table. But now we're doing a uh, collaborative thing. Except where the, for when I kick your ass. Oh, after the podcast. That one time. Yes. Oh, one time. Let the communal consciousness break down. Yes. Liz, I feel bad for owning you, but it feels so good. <laughs> Give us some questions. Question one. All right. Do your best. First question. What bird is the closest living relative to the T-Rex? Ooh, this is a good one. Because there's so many birds. A flock of seagulls. An eagle? Um, <laughs> the whole flock? The whole flock. <laughs> well, they are very good at running. Uh, I don't think they really meet the standards for the rest of... Uh, I think it might be a chicken because Ooh. I think it's, what is his name? Oh, uh, yeah. Dr. Horner yeah. was talking about a devolving uh, a bird into a dinosaur. That sounds like a good idea. A you know what? Payback's a bitch. We eat you now. <laughs> this is for the 65 billion years where you swallowing up mammals like they ain't wear no thing. I'm going to put hot sauce on you and eat you up during the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, do you, yeah, let's say chicken. chicken. Chicken's our answer. Chicken is the answer. Oh, damn right. This is turned into like a cluster tone on Liz. Wait. Ooh. ooh. So, hmm? <laughs> is it too late to change the name of the segment to <laughs> cluster pone? It's time for a cluster pone. Oh, no. We have a person oh, no. who is going to be ganged on tonight. <laughs> oh, this no. is getting really rapey. <laughs> Number two. All right. Next question. The first bird domesticated by humans was... Uh, okay, what are we going to use birds for? Obviously, pirates need parrots. Sex. 
uh, <laughs> fucking birds. What's a good? Yeah, yeah you got your roaster. You got to get a good fucking bird. You got your fucking chickens. <laughs> you got to get your fucking chicken um, in there. Domestic. I mean, she's not going to give us two in a row that are chicken. It yeah, seems right? like chicken would be one of the earliest. You know what I would go? Um, you know what I would go vicious duck? with this motherfucker and go falcon on yo. Ass. Ooh, falcon's a nice one, right? Because like, bird? have you seen one of these falcon people that are like, "Go get that," and then it goes gets it? Yeah, yeah. I can't even <laughs> tell my friends to do that. <laughs> what kind of birds are there in uh, Africa? Africa like, are, they, are they, like our black birds are o- oh, dude, God. <laughs> dude. Re- oh my, that was God. a good joke. <laughs> oh my God, black birds. Well, you know what? Wouldn't be so bad except for all the awfulness that's happened earlier in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we could let that was a solid we joke. We could let the racism y'all in. stepped we could on let that shit. The weird but it was sexual funny. violence in. Not both. <laughs> Not both. How dare you? Oh, so much editing in this episode. <laughs> yep. So falcon, you say? Maybe I, let's go with African American bird. No, that's what I said. Falcon is the uh, psychic of uh, Captain America. Look how that shit came around. Wow! Do none of y'all no, y'all on the same page, watch, right? I don't watch. In the seventies, the Falcon was books. the sidekick of uh, Captain America. He was a black. Was dude. he a, a black person? He was a black dude. Not a black person. He was a black dude. Seventies, <laughs> straight up. Yeah, he was a brother. God damn it! The, Let's go with the, Falcon. The comic That's fans a sign. that are listening right now will be like, "Fuck yeah!" They're jizzing all over. Stereos is, and is cracking up right now. Man, <laughs> I wish you would get here. him on the show. <laughs> I'm right here, guys. All right, we're going with right Falcon. Here. Right. All right. First bird domesticated by humans was a goose. A ah, goose. In your faces. Oh, oh man. Shit. Gooses on the board. By the way, yeah. gooses are the worst. <laughs> they're so mean. Worse than swans? Oh, like swans will break your arm. Oh, they're mean and they're big. They're different things. But like a swan is basically a bird Hitler, is what we're saying. Bird Hitler. <laughs> there are too many chickadees in the world right now. Of course they get sent. He would send you to duck out. Oh. <laughs> 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 This is the end <laughs> of podcasting, ladies and gentlemen. You make a Hitler <laughs> pun about a concentration camp and you win life. I didn't think it was possible to beat blackbirds. <laughs> He went up to you oh, straight up. This is the worst, the worst podcast ever. Quick, help us out, Liz. Question, question three. <laughs> okay, this next question is a multiple choice question. Question three, which of these materials is the lightest? Is it A, gold, B, diamond, or C, platinum? I have to say, it's probably it's diamond. I got. It. I think it's diamonds. Yeah. Even because, though it's really diamond compressed. is carbon, and gold and platinum are both elements that are way Much higher heavier. on the Atomic scale. scale. Yeah. I fell asleep watch like to the periodic stuff all the time. I have no <laughs> idea about any of that. We say we all say diamond. 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 Yeah. Okay. It's diamond. Yes. It's diamond. Uh, next question. All right. Next question. How many atmospheres does the Earth have? Ooh, okay, One. so uh, would you count the because like the stratosphere, the troposphere, the atmosphere? You mean the pressure of the atmosphere? Like See, how that's many? That's what I thought. Atmospheres. Oh. How many? Atmospheres well, then it would be. Does the Earth? It's have? not the, the pressure, pressure you're talking about. One. The gaseous layers that surround the planet. Correct. Are you talking about the the pressure of our atmosphere, as in the uh, the unit of pressure? I believe. So yeah. So it's a number. Uh, well, then well, it yeah, would have to be it's, number it's one, one. Right? because it's the number the, one. Yeah. The, space has zero atmospheres. The air has one. And Mars has like nine. So I don't know. It, Something I don't know. Like that. I, don't know. No, I think no, it's got it has, less. It has actually, less. Venus has less. gajillions of bajillions of atmospheres. Hmm. And underneath mm. the sea, I just specified as Mars. The bottom of the sea is like hundreds. Yes. Uh, we're gonna say one. <laughs> and see if the answer is uh, the answer is chicken. Weird. What's the answer? The answer is actually four, <gasps> and one of them is divided in half. You've got starting from the ground uh, up. It's the uh, troposphere, saw. stratosphere, oh. mesosphere, and then the thermosphere, which is broken into a bottom half, which is the lonosphere, and the top half, 
which is the exosphere. Okay, well, that, it, we got it wrong. Just we, let it be. Let us be wrong. wrong. They specifically I'm gonna, I'm gonna asked explain, if that's what you're talking no, 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 about. Even if, even if we knew that, we would have gotten that wrong. Absolutely. Okay. Sure. My bad, guys. I'm not the greatest. Don't apologize. No, it's all right. You're the best. Please. No, I'm going to leave. I quit, You're guys. You're no. killing so me. <laughs> no, don't quit. We still have one more question. <laughs> question five. All right. Question five. This is another multiple choice. To survive in the cold winter months, many insects replace their water with a chemical which acts as an antifreeze against the temperatures. This chemical is called hemolymph, glycerol, or methanol. Oh man, this Somebody is glycerol. Tough. Glycerol is, is like a thing that you would use to repel water. No, that is actually used. It's it's a form of glycerol, glycerin that's used in antifreeze. So I would definitely say that. Well, what about methanol? Right? Did you say methanol? Yeah, methanol. Methanol's an that's... alcohol, and that doesn't freeze. It freezes very at, at a, a low, very low temperature. temperature. So that could be point. helpful too. But if your blood turned to li- alcohol. Liquor, Somebody would certainly have tried to eat them at some point well, during the winter months because that would be an awesome high. My blood has turned to liquor several times. <laughs> it was called college. Hello, guys. See you later. <laughs> Somebody out there, please eat some bugs and see if they're <laughs> made of alcohol. Keep eating, see if you can find one. <laughs> guys, I got so fucked up on grasshoppers last night. <laughs> Dude, I don't know, man. Oh, man, how many uh, grasshoppers no, actually, did you eat? I had no, like three or four guys. Yeah, yeah, so no. I was trying to play the drink with creme de menthe. You ever right? play the, the <laughs> yes, century club? Club where you eat a grasshopper every minute. For yeah, dude. Minutes. So me and this girl, we were eating crickets last night, dude. Oh, and she's she's so like hot. she's so, oh man, <laughs> so like it got crazy. <laughs> we're gonna say glycerol. Damn you, communal consciousness again. It's correct. Glycerol oh, is the answer. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, you know, well, we I got mean, seven uh, or we got eight. Eight uh, out of ten. Yeah, yeah. Today we got three out of five, which, uh, you know, she cracked the whip and uh, came down pretty hard. Yeah. But we also got five for five last time, so. We got a D today, guys. A D. Super but top. we got a solid B overall. That's <laughs> but, what counts. True. Yeah. And grading on the curve consisting of one data point. <laughs> <laughs> we are we did, on top of the well. curve. Sorry, and, and also the, terribly. If we, uh, <laughs> if we start counting data points uh, of individual play. I believe the curve starts at 10. Oh. 10 out of 10. I believe that's where I was. Oh, and really? Continue oh, to that, be. Was, that was a fluke. That, so you, that's uh, a fluke? You could throw darts at trivia questions and get 10 eventually. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting real serious that's, trash talk. <laughs> Even that's when, what you I think, I think the trash talk went up a notch when we started grouping together. When we started collaborating. <laughs> We were against Somehow it's even more competitive. Somehow we're more adversarial when we're on the same team. It's like the Lakers, guys. We're the Lakers right now. Yes. <laughs> Not a lot of sports crossover on this Science Jerk I'm podcast, the, huh? I'm the Clippers. So uh, I don't know about you I'm going to say it. I'm just going to... I'm going to be Kobe. Uh, Black Mamba. You can um, you a Black Mamba. Somebody from oh, okay. the Clippers I who were, I cannot name. <laughs> I thought you were... I was bringing it back there, guys. For some reason. Did somebody say Black Mamba? <laughs> yeah, that's his uh, nickname. Nice. Right, right, right. That's somebody's that. name on the Lakers. That's Kobe. That's Kobe's that. nickname. And also Uma Thurman's yeah. nickname, so yeah. I don't know why he thought huh. that was super manly, but <laughs> that's Kobe for you. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much, Quizmaster Liz. Where can they find Woo. you, should they so desire? You can find me on Twitter at 24 Starfleet and on Facebook at Chupa Mother Flippin' Cabra. Cool. See you next week, Liz. Thanks, Thanks. Liz. Bye. It's coming right for us. It's coming right for us. Uh. Chacho here with Chan and Jeremy. And another installment of It's Coming Right For Us. This time, it's an asteroid. (gasps) As opposed to last time. When it was an asteroid, <gasps> the last time before, no, the one last time it was a mysterious but... black hole a billion light years away. <laughs> this time, it's going to pass Earth closer than our satellites. This is what? a football stadium-sized rock that's going to fly so close to Earth that you can see it with binoculars, and it's going to be closer than our satellites are. How is this not? 
like every doomsday guy's like main point, right? This is is terrifying because these seem to be happening a lot lately, actually. We've had a lot of flybys. No, no, no. Here's the thing. They are always happening. Yeah. Yeah. They have always been happening. I guess we're we're just just starting better at seeing them. We're just starting to notice them. We've just been like a naive kid in a war zone going la 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 la. And then you turn 12 and you're like, holy. But we're just as defenseless because we, luckily, they did the calculations and they figured out, okay, this thing is going to do a near miss flyby, pass by some satellites and fly away again. But if it wasn't, if it was headed for New York City, guess what we could do to stop it? Fuck all. Nothing. So this is deep impact. Here's the thing. We are It could could have have been. been. And you could be the guy that's like... If it was just a few millimeters to the left, this could be a deep impact, for real. Imagine, Casey, the first guy that saw this, he didn't know, like, how close. He's just like, there's something coming at us. So he is like the... He yeah, he's is, furiously he's page, doing calculations yeah, yeah, to figure out if we're going to die. Of the, every screenplay about <laughs> asteroids right now where he's like, uh, I don't know. Could it be? No? What? And then he runs it up the food train to his boss who's just like, ah, his I boss see goes, this all the time. Tell the press it's not going to hit anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For their own but good. Sir, these are the calculations. I don't care what the calculations say. We need ratings. And the, it's Jeff Goldblum, <laughs> Although, right? Actually saying that a meteor was going to hit New York Wouldn't City that be would a be a really ratings, good yeah. ratings. Real good ratings for a good week and a half. And then <laughs> meaning no one would exist. <laughs> so it's not going to hit us. And it will probably come back in uh, like 30 years or so. There's a number of asteroids that cross our orbit around the sun. Yeah. Every That's the thing is that 20, 30 years. Yeah. They're always we, there. They, they always do these these close flybys. And this is the closest one, though, that we've ever seen coming ahead of you, time. You know what this is? This is we are Maverick. Or no, the asteroid is Maverick. <laughs> And right. we in, are in, in, in Top Gun or in yes, the movie yes, Maverick? Yes, yes, yes. No, in Top Gun. <laughs> and we're the tower. So hold on. Are we Tom and, Cruise and, or are we Mel Gibson? No, no, no. Yeah. Which, okay, which the crazy. Asteroid. Or are we James Garner in the TV series? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the so original. That, that asteroid is the punk kid in the asteroid top flight school, right? Top Gun flight school. <laughs> and we are the colonel or whatever that's sipping his coffee. And he's like, ooh, that's hot. And then, yeah. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> And so then, we're going to spill our coffee yeah. next uh, Saturday. And then Goose is going to have to be like, come on, man. Come on, man. I need this. I have a kid and a wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is more like... And then Goose the, dies? Yeah, and then Goose then dies because it the gets too close to the sun. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> His wings made of wax melt. <laughs> He's Icarus. This asteroid is more like Sleepless in Seattle, <laughs> oh, where no. okay. uh, the Earth is... Really May, boring. Brian and T- uh, Tom uh, Hanks, and the asteroid is an extra that doesn't have any lines because there's a shit ton of those and they're all through the movie and you don't notice them because they don't interact with the fucking stars <laughs> until they wipe out all life on Earth. What? Which Every has 50 happened million years before or so. and is inevitable to happen yes. again Eventually. at some point. Therefore, we kind of have to start working no, on a... Should. That's defense why defense system. No, that's for why we need things. to start working on asteroid mining so we get an idea of how to deal with these things. We get a lot of practice in them. So when something actually does come up to us, we will be ready for them. You know and who, in the meantime, we'll be mining a bunch of awesome I, platinum. I have some suggestions. Have you seen Does it involve Top Gun at all? No. Okay. <laughs> but it does involve another movie. A documentary? Maybe you've seen it. It's entitled Armageddon. Mm, no, nope. oh, we should shoot Bruce Willis at it. Yeah, there we go. Bruce Willis, there we go. No? No, we can't because Ben Affleck is now a national treasure and he's probably going to win the best directing Oscar for Argo. Uh, and also Liv Tyre's an elf and they don't We don't do need Bruce Willis. <laughs> All we have to do I'll is... I'll grant you we could fling him into space. Isn't there a Die Hard coming out in yeah. a couple weeks? Good. Yeah, but Data Die Hard again. And Nine? to I don't prevent know. another return of Bruno, I feel like it's incumbent upon us to fling him into space <laughs> as soon as possible so we don't have to hear his goddamn harmonica anymore. So anyway, the reason that we're talking about this today... Because you have a phobia. And you keep bringing well, it up. That, there's that, but the, uh, it's coming tomorrow. 
Oh. Not tomorrow, the day we're recording this, but tomorrow, the day this podcast comes out. You mean we're not speaking into the microphone directly to these people? No. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Jeremy. Did you take those chips with you? You didn't finish the bag. We just so sat sad. on them. For you those. did get half the bag down, though, so that's... I'm sitting on these chips for nutrition, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so if we get it edited in time, this podcast will come out on Friday. This asteroid is going to fly by on Saturday we afternoon. We have to get it edited just in case that it crashes into us. They got the calculations wrong. So you have approximately 24 hours to listen to this podcast before you die. And what better way to spend a half hour of your last 24 hours <laughs> than listening to us talk about shoving <laughs> chips up our butt. <laughs> Because when you think about it, isn't life just about shoving things? It's all that and up. a bag of and chips. Hello, my uh, baby. Hello, hello, my honey. honey. Hello, hello, my lifetime guy. <laughs> 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 And that's our show. Thank you very much to Jeremy Bellinger. Thank you so much, guys. This was my first podcast, and you were gentlemen. Yeah. I'll always remember you. You're bleeding a little. That's not bad. <laughs> that's okay. To be fair, that's the chips, not us. In my butt. <laughs> yeah, you know, just get them lodged in there, and just like every once in a while, you cut yourself on it. Yeah. You should have tried to eat all those Bavarian pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was hungry. Those things okay. are solid. <laughs> um, where can they find you if they were looking for you? You can find me on Twitter at, at Jeremy Bellinger. B E L A N G E R. Thank you, sir. Most but people. But the Jeremy spelled with a G, which is weird. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jeremy, like, three. It's like G off. G. There's three G's. It's as, My last name is the complicated one, but I'm trying to make the first one as just as difficult as possible. <laughs> and you got a mutiny show coming up at iOS? Yeah, February 17th, 7.30 at uh, iOS. 6366 Ooh. Hollywood Boulevard. Guys, you see that? I know that. Just a few days after Valentine's Day, so bring your dates and more. Sure it's bring your be... disappointment. And dis yeah, disappoint them <laughs> some more. <laughs> bring your disillusioned single ass over and maybe you'll find somebody. Exactly. How many of the mutiny are uh, are single and, and ma ready to mingle? So uh, most of them are, and that's what? a recent occurrence. Oh, I've seen... Ever since we formed the group, we were, I think we were all, all but one. We're in relationships. <laughs> and then we just slowly became more <laughs> single together. That's the life of a comedian, my friend. Uh, that's the life of a sketch comedian. <laughs> <laughs> At least a comedian gets laid. Yeah. A sketch comedian is like, uh, sorry, one. baby, I'd like to spend some time with you, but I have to put on this silly hat <laughs> and go out for an audience of almost no one. I need to go find a crystal ball for a sketch that I wrote and no one will know that I wrote because other people are in it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go record audio at a kitchen and see, we just upload it to a server and we expect <laughs> people to download it onto their phones and listen to it in their free time. Listen, I going, know baby? it's sexy, baby, but... <laughs> oh, baby. No, really, it's a thing. <laughs> well, I, guess it's I actually had to explain to my mom what a podcast was. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go record a podcast my friend she's like what is that <laughs> and so then i had to explain it she's like is that oh. drugs oh, is that i'm gonna go to the drugs i'm gonna go do a new drug called podcast <laughs> did you say well isn't that nice yeah 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 oh we are sad lonely people and you can find <laughs> us on twitter at, at the science at jerks. lonely girl 16 <laughs> at the science jerks or on ok cupid <laughs> oh man you can no you can <laughs> We are thesciencejerks.com or sciencejerks.com. Find us on Facebook. You can email us, chan at sciencejerks.com, chacho at sciencejerks.com. If you uh, enjoyed yourself, go to iTunes and give us a rating. Yeah. yeah. And subscribe. Give us a comment, perhaps. Oh, yeah. We love those. Tell us what and you think. Hell, send us, seriously, send, send us corrections. Send us we corrections. Got, I, don't I be a dick not, about it, but but you can send us corrections. Feel free to it. be a dick about it. I don't care. You're on the internet. That's the Frank lingua franca of the internet, is being a dick. <laughs> All right. Be uh, a fucking dick about it if you, email if, us, if you must. And we will, we will correct it, because we're not good at this, but we like this. and we, It'd be nice to be right. And we make no claims about the accuracy of anything that we've no. said we make over claims the course of this about podcast. About the quality of our puns. But not necessarily the quality of our scientific. You should add, have a disclaimer that you know all the facts have been changed <laughs> to, <laughs> to, protect to protect the, the science. Innocence <laughs> of the science. Also, find Dave on Twitter at 
at Dave Chacho. You find Robert on Twitter at 999RPMs. Mm-hmm. And thanks for listening. See you next time. Sit on a bag of chips. Thanks, for Jeremy. Us, you? Thank you. It's good enough to understand Flock of Seagulls jokes, which is the basis form of humor. <laughs> Hey, easy. I think I was the first one with the Flock of Seagulls on this podcast. Thank you, Chan. I'll be back on your podcast sometimes. You know. <laughs>